Kindness. Do you perform acts of kindness throughout the day? We're going to be speaking to the founder of the One Kindness Movement today, whose goal is to get one million acts of kindness out into the world. We're going to find out what is an act of kindness. During this interview, you're probably going to ask yourself, well, am I kind? What do I do? What's my act of kindness? Have I been kind to people? Do I do it as a, as a habit or do I just do it sporadically? Why do we want to do it? I mean, why do we want to put good out into the world? Does it make us feel good? Do we feel good about making other people feel good? What is an act of kindness? Is it a gift? Is it an act of service? We're going to figure this out today. John Wang, founder of the One Kindness Movement, who's joining us from Vancouver, Canada. How are you, John? Great to have you here. It's a pleasure to be here, James. How are you doing? Doing so well. Thank you, mate. Doing so well. So tell me a little bit about yourself, first of all, and how you came to be the founder of One Kindness and what it's all about. Yeah, sure. I mean, I... Uh... You know, I'm an, I'm an entrepreneur, but for the longest time, I've always been a big believer that uh, what it is that we do every single day can have multiple impacts. One, of course, is our own impact, the way that we affect ourselves. But, you know, in terms of ideas of profit and growth and the ideas of sort of getting a message out. But we, we tend to forget the kind of impact that we can have as individuals to help the world around us. And the truth is, you know, I did a little bit of research into this, you know, the science behind kindness. And I discovered that those two things are actually one and the same, which is to say kindness is actually a very selfish act. And that's a good thing. I want people to be more selfish. And I'll explain why in a little bit. Uh, to sort of talk a little bit of my story, um, you know, I have a uh, uh, I actually started my first sort of uh, philanthropic sort of charity movement when I was quite young. I was in uh, eighth grade, which up in Canada basically is, you know, what we call middle school to early high school kind of thing. And at the time, um, I was, you know, I was like any other kid who's, you know, in eighth grade. I didn't really care about anything other than myself or, you know, math homework or whatever it is that you care, you know, you think about as a kid. And I was sitting at home and... Um, my parents were watching the news and they had seen this, uh, this, this news report about an earthquake event that had happened in a place called Taiwan. And uh, that's actually where it is my parents were from, so they cared a lot about it. But, you know, like any other kid, I just didn't care. And it wasn't until on the screen there was a kid about my age who was, um, who was affected very deeply by this, uh, this, this earthquake. Um, you have seen that he was cr basically sort of crouching over this building that had collapsed and he was digging through the rubble and um, uh, the, the news reporter went up to him and asked, you know, what are you digging for? You know, what's, what's going on? Why are you here? And he said, well, my sister and my parents are down there. And it's very, very clear at this point that if you're looking at the building, that there's no possible survivor uh, who, who could have made it after the earthquake. But he was just in this trance-like state. He just kept digging and kept repeating, you know, my sister and my parents are down there. My sister and my parents are down there. And it wasn't until later on the rescue workers tried to pull him off that, you know, he was still repeating the same words. And in that moment, I just started crying. I, I never really cried uh, as a kid except for that well, one time because I suddenly realized that he's exactly like me in every sense of the word and every kind of everyday acts the things that he was still worried about yesterday is probably the same things that i was worried about today and in that moment i just realized that something had to change i had to help and uh, i ended up with the help of my school and my parents and and various other organizations started a, a foundation that we were able to you know basically fundraise quite a bit of money for you know the relief of the situation and ever since then, it's in the back of my head that I wanted to pursue this, uh, something that has greater benefit to the world. Um, every single year, I take on a personal challenge. Uh, you know, one year I did this thing called radical honesty, where I just told the truth for only, you know, only the truth for a year. Uh, another year, I sort of, um, you know, wanted to go and spend time with the homeless. So every single week, I would go and take a different homeless person or meet on the street all to lunch and just to hear their story and to understand where they're coming from. And this year I started doing this thing called one kindness, which is every single day you just do one kind act for yourself. 
So uh, that's sort of how the, the whole movement started. It started as actually as a personal, as a personal curiosity, a personal experiment to see what the effect would have. And what I found what was absolutely shocking was it, the benefit it had for me, actually, not just for the people that I was helping. Yeah. Well, we're going to find out what the benefit is uh, in a second. Um, you, you mentioned that you did a year of radical honesty. There's actually a book, isn't there, called Radical Honesty <laughs> by Brad Blanton. And uh, I've read that book. And when I read it, I, uh, I was like, oh, great. I'm going to go and practice radical honesty. And, and I did. And it was super, super awkward. And it, but, it was, but it was actually really pretty awesome at the same time. I was in a r- romantic relationship um, at the time. And I read this book on a plane <clears throat> heading back to see my, uh, my girlfriend. And, and uh, we had a, a, a real breakthrough conversation that lasted a couple of hours because we just were radically honest with, with one another about things we didn't like, things we did like, concerns for the future, like all kinds of things. It was, it was pretty remarkable when, you, when you're actually radically honest and you find out that you're doing things that the other person doesn't like and you just like, what? And then you realize, and then you share what you dislike or like <laughs> with the other person and then you see their reaction. It's pretty amazing. But I found the experience to be one where it really actually brought us closer together because the, the deeper the trust and the honesty the, the kind of more um intimacy i guess or um more c- greater connection you felt did you i don't want to get off the topic of one kindness but did you find that or did you find it to be less or more than that i i actually i'm right on the same page with you um i discovered as well through the book uh, radical honesty by brad blanton um, and later on, I actually got a chance to meet him, and he is every bit as interesting as the book suggests. I found that it had this absolutely life-changing effect where once you open up to somebody, uh, they open right up back, back up to you. Uh, I thought it would be a lot more difficult than it actually was, but it was this incredible thing. I mean, we tell these little white lies all the time. We, and, and these could be lies of omission. They could just be like moments where we feel something that we dislike in other people or moments where we feel something that we don't have the courage to voice. But it's incredible how liberating the experience becomes once you've had a chance to do so. And you do connect at a very deep level with people. Mm. Uh, I still practice it with my friends to this day. Um, although probably not quite as dramatically as I did for that one year where I did it with everyone. <laughs> well, you've, you've actually inspired me to get Brad Blanton on the, on, uh, on the show and interview him about it. So I'll, uh, I'll thank you for sharing that. Well, I'll, that's another, that's another topic of conversation, but the idea is that you, it sounds like you, you implement these tests or these experiments once a year or once a month or something where you actually go out and you make a point to do something in a specific action. So what did you do with this one act of kindness? And you were mentioned before, you know, it's kindness is a selfish act and that's a good thing. So let's just start with, you know, how did you start off? Like, how did you start doing this? Great question. Um, it, uh, it started actually, I was going through a, a little bit of a rut in my life in some ways. I mean, not necessarily in terms of business. My business was doing fine. Um, you know, I, I was happy in my life in a lot of ways. I was traveling a lot. I was, you know, doing all these things that I thought was going to make me happier, but there's this kind of emptiness that I was feeling. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's the emptiness, I think, that comes when you've sort of hit all those check marks that you feel like you should hit in your life. I set this list of to-dos when I was a teenager, like when I become an adult, whatever that meant, you know, I would go and do all these things and I had checked off most of the things on that list. And I kind of realized, well, this wasn't giving me that sense of fulfillment that I was craving that I that I know that I could have and that sense of passion and, and excitement for life that I see other people um, you know having so this year I started off as saying well you know, I read in a book something just like you know go and do a daily act of kindness and I was like okay sure it sounds easy enough and uh, that day I was at a friend's house and there was a little party we're all hanging out watching a movie and on my way back, I saw this guy that I knew that I wasn't really that close with. And he was walking on the street in kind of a rough neighborhood. And I kind of thought, well, I, I should go up and see if, you know, how he's doing. So I pulled my car over and I asked, 
you know, hey, can I, can I help you? Basically, like we don't know each other that well, but you know, you're walking in this kind of darkly lit alleyway in the middle of the night. Is there something I could do? And he's like, well, um, you want to go grocery shopping. So I said, hop in, you know, it's, it's at one o'clock in the morning. I'm going to drive around town and we're going to find a grocery store for you. So that's what we did. We, we had this great time. We actually found a 24 hour grocery store and we just went shopping. And in doing so, we had this amazing conversation, this, this really great connection. And at the end of that, I, I realized, oh my God, like, I don't know why I just felt great the next day. Like all that feelings of like anxiety or, or, hesitancy or that sense of emptiness just faded i just felt phenomenal so i'm like okay there's got to be something there um so i started asking my friends you know who do you know that is an expert on happiness and, and what that effect is and they connected me with um a professor who had done various research on happiness and i asked the professor i called him up and i asked hey listen uh you don't know me but i know you're an expert on happiness and i would love to find out how kindness leads to happiness and he said, There's, there are apparently tons of tests that have been done, scientifically backed research, uh, throughout the years that show the beneficial effects on ourselves uh, when we do an act of kindness. It has, relates to basically the vagus nerve uh, and, and our brainstem and the way that our empathy works, but it like kicks in our endorphins. Um, it kicks in all of these great chemicals that make us feel what the scientists have now called the helper's high. So I didn't realize that I was feeling literally high from this little act of kindness that I was doing for someone. And uh, ever since then, I've been like, okay, we, we gotta get everyone else doing this because it's amazing that we're not doing this every day. It's amazing that we can feel this connected, this excited and this happy with you know, basically helping other people. The help is high. I like that. So when you help someone, endorphins are released. That's what's, that's what's going on with the body. So it's like if you exercise, afterwards it releases endorphins and you feel, you feel great. If you help someone with an act of kindness, you, according to these, these studies, you get the same kind of endorphin release. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, there's actually very good evolutionary studies done on it. And as a matter of fact, if you want to trace back to the original founder who discovered the science behind this, uh, he is Charles Darwin. And he had actually written about how empathy is a particularly um, important aspect in mammals and in human beings that is not necessarily universal, but um, empathy is a great evolutionary trait because if you help other people in your community, they tend to want to help you back. So that's how we build communities in a very tribal hunter gatherer sense, because if we're just acting in our own self interest all the time, then the community suffers, but if we're helping each other, then we grow. So, you know, we've had the long for a long time in the business communities, this idea that, oh, it's all about profit and it's, we're all up for ourselves, but really the greatest benefit you know, oftentimes come from our ability to connect with and, and sort of support other people in our society. I'll, get, I'll give you one example of where that's, where that's true in my own life. And if you're a long time listener of my podcast, uh, the James Swanick show, you, you probably would have heard this story, but back in 2000, <clears throat> excuse me, back in 2010, I helped a friend of mine with an act of kindness. Uh, I won't say what it was because, just because he'll feel embarrassed by it, but I, I helped him out with something. And uh, that was it. I didn't ask for anything in return. I didn't expect anything in return. And then three weeks later, he messaged me in an email and he said, hey, ESPN is looking for an international anchor to host Sports Center, the TV show Sports Center. And I thought you'd be really good for it. Would you like me to introduce you to the producer of ESPN who's hiring this international anchor? And I'm like, hell yeah. And then he introduced me to this producer and long story short, I ended up getting a job and hosting sports center on ESPN mm -hmm. for two years out of Bristol, Connecticut. Um, that wouldn't have come to me. That opportunity would not have come to me if I had not have helped my friend because we weren't really at that point, we weren't really communicating. I had just made a, an effort to reach out to people and say, Hey, how can I help? And then he actually took me up on my offer and I gave him help. And then three weeks later, bang, there you go. It's like, 
and I, and I wanted to host a TV show for 20 years since I was a kid. So, I mean, that's just one example, but it's pretty powerful, isn't it? It's like I did an act of kindness for someone and then he did an act of kindness for me back. I wasn't expecting anything. He didn't owe me anything. I don't think he felt like he owed me anything. It's just he wanted to do something because I'd done something for him. Yeah, it's, it's a very powerful thing. And I love that story. Thank you for sharing. Um, it, it is actually absolutely coming from the fact that you help something and unreciprocated. Like you didn't do it because you want to do it. You wanted to get on ESPN, but you did it because you wanted to help someone. I actually have a story um, that somebody else shared with me, if, if I can share that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, so a few weeks ago, I was down in uh, California and I was at an event at a hotel and I had just, you know, I was, it was a long day and I just wanted to sort of burn off some energy. So I went to the gym and while I was at the gym, I met a guy, his name is Tony Horton. I don't know if you know who he is. Yeah. He's the, the, the face of P90X, which is one of the most successful, um, workout DVD programs of all time. Absolutely. Yeah. Huge, huge name. And, um, you know, it was, it was a really random occurrence, uh, but I ran into him and he and his team were there doing this really intense workout and he kind of pulled me in there and we ended up joining him on the workout. And at the end of it, when I was telling him about this you know, movement that I was doing, he told me a story. He said, you know, when he first started off in uh, his early days, uh, he, had, he had gone to LA to become an actor, but at the same time, he was also doing personal training. This was before he became, you know, sort of the massive success that he ended up becoming. And he, at the time, was reading a book. And every single day, there was a task for him to do in the book. And one of the days, uh, the task was go do something kind for something that, for someone that you may not necessarily like. And he was kind of like, oh man, okay, fine, whatever. Um, and again, he wasn't, you know, extremely well off at this point. You know, he still needed to find more clients. But at his gym, there was this guy he would play pickup basketball games with. And uh, the guy was, you know, could sometimes get in his face a little bit. But Tony felt, well, you know what? I'm going to try this. So he went up to the guy and said, listen, I, uh, I want to train you. And if you, if you would like my help, I would like to train you uh, just free of charge just because, you know, I, I, I want to help. And the guy was like, sure, you know, I'm a little overweight at the time. So why not? And after a few sessions, Tony said that the training was so effective that the guy was blown away and he came back. He's like, listen, Tony, I've never seen change like this happen to my own body before. Um, and I'm so impressed. I would like you to meet a friend of mine. And his friend's name was Carl Deichler, who is the CEO of Beachbody. And it was because of his act of kindness, because of Tony's act of kindness reaching out, that you know, Beachbody met Tony and the two of them created basically p90x which ended up you know generating something like over a billion dollars of revenue it's literally more than one billion dollars with a billion. <laughs> yeah it's absolutely insane so very similar to, to your story there james you know it's incredible how much we could sort of see how i don't know if you believe in karma i don't know if that you know the idea of sort of uh, putting acts of kindness out there can come back to you is 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 necessarily the point here but a lot of times we do see how helping each other can have benefits to our own careers. Yeah. I'll give you just one more example and then we'll, we'll, we'll come up with some practical ways that we can help people little things during the day. Uh, I remember I was in ba <clears throat> Bangkok, Thailand in 2001 and I was living in London at the time and I'd just gone down to Koh Phen Yang and Koh Samui and done the full moon party. I was backpacking around and, I remember I was going back to London and my, my visa, my Australian work visa was about to expire and I didn't have a job. I didn't have any work when I went back to London. And I remember I was walking along, I think it was, it's called Koh San Road in Bangkok. And I remember they had this little, um, there's like a coffee shop, but they showed movies inside. It was kind of like a pub coffee shop kind of thing. And they were showing the movie Coyote Ugly. And, uh, which is an all right kind of movie, I guess, but it's from back in 2000 or something. And I went, oh, Coyote Ugly, all right, I'll just go in there and, and watch that. And there was only one ch free chair left. And it was next to these two guys that were sitting down. And there was about 50 people in this coffee shop bar kind of thing, all watching the movie. And so I went down and said, oh, is this seat taken? May I sit here? And one of the two guys said, sure, sit down. So I sat down, watched the movie. At the end of the movie, we got to talking and 
in conversation, I had said oh, that I was going back to London, that I was, wasn't sure whether I was going to get work there and or whether I was going to go back to Australia or, or whatever. And he goes, oh, I know, I know a friend of mine who works in the sports industry because I told him I was interested in sports and, and works at a magazine called Sport Business Magazine. And um, he said, well, when you get back to London, I'll connect you guys via email or something. And I went, okay, cool. That'd be great. So we swapped details and, I, and then I went to the airport, jumped on a plane and flew back to London. And then two weeks later, I got an email from him, that guy that I'd met, introducing me to his friend, a guy called Matt. And Matt said, yeah, I'm having a party Friday night. Come and, come and hang out. So I went to the party and just socialized with him. And then he said, are you looking for work? I said, yeah, you know, something in sports. He goes, oh, I work for Sport Business Magazine. I think they're looking for journalists. Um, I'll connect you to the, the editor. The next week I went in, interviewed with the editor and he offered me a, a, a job right away and offered to give me a, a, extend my work visa for another two years. And I went, great. So then I ended up getting this great job. I had a visa in the UK for an extra two years. Um, and ultimately that same editor of the magazine was the guy who wrote my visa application for the United States two years <laughs> later which ended up enabling me to be able to live and work in the U S on an I visa for the first two years before I then went on to get a green card before I then went on to become a naturalized naturalized citizen. So you can just see like just the simple, the simplest little thing can like an act of kindness can just lead to huge life changing life transforming benefits and, and and you know for me it was just i just went to sit down in a damn coffee shop in, in thailand it was the only chair left and that guy led to another guy that led to me staying in the uk and led to me going to the us and getting a visa and like just little tiny little acts of kindness can completely change change your life so anyway i don't want to labor the point let's get into some practical things here shall we um john what what what's what can the listener or viewer do. What's another example? Let's rattle, rattle off some examples of acts of kindness that we can do here. Um, and like, yeah. maybe put some structure to like, right, what do we do on a Monday? What do we do on a Tuesday? <laughs> How do we make sure that we're doing this all the time rather than just, you know, oh, yeah. maybe. I'll do it. You know, it's actually, it's the biggest thing is there's been studies that have sort of tracked. Um, so we know now that kindness sort of makes you happier, scientifically speaking. We know that it has an impact on your physiology and your psychology. But there's actually a very specific way to do it to sort of maximize that benefit that you get. Uh, it's not just go out there and be kind because what, what is kindness anyway? Is it like opening the door for somebody? Is it like buying someone a cup of coffee? Do you have to go volunteer? I think a lot of people have this idea that kindness is this big thing that you have to do that's like done by like Gandhi and Mother Teresa and like these exceptional figures. But the science behind it that they've sort of discovered, the studies that have been done, shows that a kind act can actually be very, very simple, as long as it's done on a regular, routine, daily basis, and it's a compounding effect. As in, if you do it one day, you're gonna feel pretty good for the next couple of days, but then that's gonna taper off very, very quickly, as opposed to if you just simply make a routine out of it, you're actually gonna see that change in your life. So the One Kindness Movement, uh, comes with a bracelet and uh, if you want to go check out the bracelet you can go to my website or you can, if you're watching this on video right now you'll see I'm wearing one of these things and it's a bracelet that basically says one kindness on one side so the idea is you start your day wearing this and at some point through the day you go do an act of kindness that is unreciprocated and just for the benefit of somebody else um, this can be as big as you want or as small as you want but the truth is it's actually not the size of the act that matters. Um, it can be something like, you know, paying a compliment to somebody or telling somebody um, that, you know, you appreciate them. Uh, a friend of mine does this where he'll go to, especially people who work in the service industry, and he'll say, hey, has somebody told you lately that you were appreciated? And she has had people sort of say, you know, see that change in their face immediately, even going as far as down as like literally breaking down crying in front of him because they've never been told something like that or they don't hear it enough. Um, or it could be something like, you know, for example, up here we have a cafe called Tim Hortons and I literally just buy 
like stacks and stacks of these like, you know, anywhere between five to 20 bucks, you know, Tim Hortons cards. And when I see someone who I'm just like, who, who, who's just going about their day, it could be someone, you know, the street, I'll just be like, hey, listen, I just want to give you a Tim Hortons card. Just to say, thanks for being awesome. Thanks for being you. Um, really? and it, yeah. And, and a lot of times then you see that change and then you mm. feel that warmth that that's, that can make a difference in how you feel. So the idea is after you're done, this bracelet acts a reminder. So after you've done the act, you flip it around. And the logo that you see on my bracelet there is our, uh, is the movements logo, which is a heart with a check mark in it. Oh, and it re- yeah. And it reminds you just that, yeah, you've done it today. And it also signifies to other people around you that, that they can see that you've done it and they get reminded to go do something like that on their own as well. I love it. Will you send me one of those? I want to wear it and I'm going to put it on my Snapchat and Instagram and, and, uh, and I'm going to document what happens with it. I love it. I'm going to <laughs> Absolutely. Go. Yeah. I'll, I'll do it today. So pay a compliment, tell someone you appreciate them, give them a, like a Starbucks card or, a, you know, whatever. Buy a cup of coffee. I'm going to play a, <clears throat> I'm going to play a recorded voicemail I have here. I have a friend of mine called, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't know what's going on with my throat today. Um, I have a friend of mine called Mark Krasner. He lives over in New York. He owns a company called Expectful, which helps pregnant women um, with meditation so they have really healthy pregnancies. Really good friend of mine. And uh, he does this thing. Once every like two or three weeks, he'll phone me and leave a message. So like, he, strategic, he lives in New York. I'm in Los Angeles. And he strategically phones me early morning his time when he knows that I'll be asleep and my phone's on silent. So then when I wake up, I'll see that there's a missed call and a voicemail from him. So, so within like 20 minutes of me waking up, when I, if I check my phone and voice messages, I see there's a message there. Now I'm going to try and play this. I, I haven't listened to this. I know he swears. So if you, if you, <laughs> I think he says, yeah, I think he does swear. Um, so if you are with children right now and you don't want to let them hear <laughs> swear words, just, put a thing over their ears, but let's play this and I'll just give you an idea about what, what he sends me. Um, and this is, this is obviously his act of kindness. He's never said to me, like, Oh, I'm, I'm going to send you an act of kindness, but this is an act of kindness. He doesn't ask for anything in return. He just sends me a message every three weeks in the morning. So let's see if I can play this here. This is uh, your future friend. When I say future, it's just because I'm, I'm three hours ahead in the future, so it makes me a little more wise, you know, because I'm like, you know, I'm at, I, I can see three hours into the future. Uh, calling to tell you that you're the fucking man. You're the best. You're the greatest. You're a champion. You've got a great heart, big muscles. You're charismatic, intelligent, passionate and a force for good in this world, man. Have a great day. That's it. <laughs> I literally got like six of these messages that like, they're like two or three weeks apart. Like I'm scrolling down now. I can see it. Like, and I just wake up and like, who wouldn't feel good when you wake up and you get that message, right? Oh my God. That's great. I, we, we, we need more people like that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and what a what a great thing. I mean, honestly, um, you know, just it's sim- it's so simple. Make it make it your make it a habit. You know, sometimes I'll just have a stack of little note cards that I leave around, and I'll just write a little hand. You know, people we don't do enough hand wrote notes. Everything lives on the phone these days. We just text everyone, right? Write a note. You know, it doesn't matter for somebody in your life that you care about. Just write them a note. Just be like, listen, I just want to say I love you because you're amazing. Uh, you have you have you know big epic muscles. Um, <laughs> you're a rock star, right? Uh, people, it makes people think you can, you can think of a time where you heard or something like that. And it just makes your day. Um, you know, what? I, I like to, people don't write handwritten notes a- anymore and they should. And in fact, I can't show you now, but on my fridge, I'm looking, I'm recording this in my living room and my stand up desk, but I have a direct line of sight towards my fridge. And on my fridge, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven handwritten letters that listeners of the James Swanick Show podcast or followers on my Snapchat or Instagram have, ha- have written to me thanking me for the effect that they've had in their life. And I post it there. And 
I remember those people's names. Like I, and I value that and I treasure it and it makes me feel good to look at it. Um, so a handwritten note is great. Here's another one. Even if the idea of writing a handwritten note is like, oh, it's too much work. I don't want to do it. Now I've got to find their address and then I've got to go to the post office and then I've got to get a stamp and an envelope and write their name on the thing and send it. Like even like, to me, that sounds like a lot of work. I don't like doing that. I'll tell you what I do. The next best thing. And even it can, it can even be more powerful is send a video text message. Like that is super powerful. I'll literally just grab my iPhone turn it on me and I'll say something like, Hey man, I just wanted to say it was super awesome seeing you the other day. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate you. What you did was great. You're awesome. Blah, blah, blah. And I just boom, send it as a video text because then they can see your body language. They can, they can see the visual of you thanking them. Well, in this case, I'm using an example of me thanking someone, but there's no reason why you can't just out of the blue, pick up your phone, record yourself in video and say, Hey man, I haven't spoken to you in six months. I just want to say, I miss talking to you. You rock. How are you? That's cool. That can like, you know, and who doesn't like getting invitations to places, right? People love being invited somewhere because it, it makes them feel like they're wanted that the other, that someone else in this world likes and enjoys their company. So I was, um, as we're recording this, it's December, 2016 and the holiday period is coming up. Um, and I live in Los Angeles and there's a lot of transient people, a lot of people who, whose families live from out of town and they're just here working and stuff like that. It gets lonely this time, this time of year, because a lot of people go back to their, their families and the people who stay are kind of like, Oh, I don't know what's going on. Oh, anyway, I was in the gym today, the crunch gym. And I ran into a guy, Australian actor called Ryan Cooper. And he's in a new a Scarlett Johansson movie that's coming up. And I met, funnily enough, I met him in a Russian bathhouse in new york about six weeks ago and i just got talking he goes are you aussie i'm like yeah are you are you aussie yeah and we just got chatting anyway long story short he was in the gym he came up and said hello he said hey man how you doing remember we met in the russian bathhouse in new york i'm like yeah i do remember ryan how are you it's great to talk to you and uh he's married he's got, he's got a lovely wife and he said oh my wife's back in um in australia at the moment i'm just finishing up some work stuff here but she's back in back in australia and instinctively, I thought to myself, ah, oh, he's probably feeling a little bit of loneliness or, or whatever. And there's, a, there's a, an event or a, a, a social function I'm going to this Sunday. And I instinctively thought of him and said, hey, man, I'm going to this, this thing on Sunday, um, five o'clock. Do you want to, would you like to come? It's going to be a cool little group of people. It's a little Christmas party. And he looked at me and he's like, mate, I would love to. Thank you so much. You know, my wife's back in Australia at the moment. I'm feeling, a, he didn't say a lonely or isolated, but I think he said, I'm feeling a little bit, I'm not sure, I can't remember what the word was, something about being separated from Australia or his wife or whatever. And he said, oh, really, that would be great. That'd be awesome. And I could see in his face that he really meant it, you know, like he was really very appreciative of that. And uh, so, yeah. And then I texted him the details and, and whatever. So, I'm hogging the conversation here, hogging the, you know, <laughs> I'm talking too much and for the sake of hearing my own voice. And, um, but I'm just using that as an example, like an invitation, inviting someone somewhere can be an act of kindness. Yeah, absolutely. I love the example. Um, and an invitation is very powerful. I mean, you know, it's a funny thing. We think back to when we were kids and sometimes you see that kid in the corner sitting alone and uh, no one's sitting with them at lunch and you don't realize that there are people who live their entire lives like that you know invite someone you know for a cup of coffee that you someone at work you know um other little things are just things that you can a lot of times encounter I, I can't tell you at this point how many random things have come up you know I'll see people on the street you know trying to put luggage away or trying to put groceries in their car and i'll just go up and i'll be like can i give you a hand with that always ask this is important don't just don't, don't just go up to people and grab their <laughs> grab their groceries they're going to think that you're robbing them you know what's funny though when i have done that and I, I i wouldn't say i do it regularly but i do it sporadically when i have done that and i ask oh can i help you carry this you know your baby stroller up the stairs or can i help you off the train or would you like to sit in this chair if i ask the question their first response is usually oh no thank you that's very nice and then i then i say again it's okay let, let me do it for you and then they say yes yeah. so it's funny people will will instinctively want to say no because I don't, I'm not sure what's going on there mentally, um, but I think may, maybe it's an element of, of a stranger danger. It might be an element also of not wanting to um, 
put the other, put the, the other person off and not wanting to trouble them, even though I'm asking to be troubled slightly to, you know, to, to help you. So you do have to come in with a, with a follow-up question. Um, the other way, the other thing you can do is actually, instead of asking a question like, can I help you take the baby stroller up the stairs? It could be like, oh, let me help you take the baby stroller up the stairs and then just wait. Like, don't go and actually move in there because then maybe the mother thinks that you're going <laughs> to steal the baby. But rather than like asking yeah. if they'd like the help, you just say, I'm going, to, I'm going to help you. And then they can either say, oh, thank you or no, it's okay. So you can experiment a little, little bit with that. And I use the baby stroller as an example because sometimes when I get off the New York subway, when I'm in New York, I do see you know, women struggling to, to pull their baby stroller up. And so I'll just, let me take that for you and I'll, and I'll move it. And they, they're always so appreciative. They're like, thank you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you bring up a very good point. It is actually not that easy to offer help to a stranger. We get very defensive because we feel like someone's trying to sell us something. Uh, recently, so um, my friends and I were setting this up in multiple cities in 2017, but you know, we do little kindness gatherings and kindness parties. So we just go and brainstorm some random things. So we've done things where we go down to, you know, let's just say like, you know, rougher areas of the neighborhood where some people who might be homeless or transient might, you know, congregate and we'll go away and give away things like gloves and socks. And one time we decided to just go up there and just pack up a lot of little snacks. Like we will buy um, these prepackaged popcorn and cookies and write little notes on them like you're amazing. And we try to give them to strangers on the street. And you'd be surprised at how many people look at us expecting a sales pitch to follow and we had to actually explain to them that like would you like some cookies and we're just giving this away because it's our one kindness project we're just being it's a kindness project that we're doing that we're just giving away free stuff and so many people would kind of had to do a double take where they're kind of like no 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 okay fine all right <laughs> that second moment right it's it's something that does occasionally take a little bit of patience but the result that you get from it, the way you feel afterwards is so rewarding. Um, and at the same time, it's, you know, just, just take, you have to sort of keep an eye out for ways to help people. And that's how we build a better society, in which people kind of uh, uh, create that. Um, I'm gonna speaking, of, sorry, speaking of things, thank you. I, I'm sorry to cut you off there. I, I also want to thank you because you mentioned about uh, listening to your podcast. Because of you, uh, I got a standing desk. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that's so good. Now we're both standing on our stand up desk. <laughs> that's right. So I wanted to say thank you. And I appreciate that because this thing has changed my entire workflow. And I feel so much better as a result of it. <laughs> that's amazing. I'm so happy. And so, and look, that's made me feel good. So you, yeah. I, yeah. I could flip this thing around. <laughs> I didn't even realize that I'd done my act of kindness to you. So oh just, man. <laughs> And that's the thing is that it's so easy for us to, to receive help from someone we don't even know. And, uh, and, and we could sh share that, that moment, right? Like share, share that appreciation. I think what I might do, I might do a little test run when I'm next in the grocery store. I might see if I can find someone ahead or behind me who maybe has like a, like a few items. I'm not, I'm not going to pay for everyone's groceries. <laughs> I could do, but if someone's got like 200 bucks with a grocery, yeah. <laughs> maybe I won't do it. But if someone's got like one or two items, I might, um, what I might do is like, if someone's behind me, I'll say, you know what? I'm going to grab your groceries. It's on me today and just go bang. Or what else could you do? I guess you could secretly leave because that way, then you're going to feel good about their reaction. So what you could do is you could secretly slip the cash register person 10 bucks if you know it was going to be and say hey i'm gonna this is 10 bucks for the person behind me just mm -hmm. use that 10 dollars for them you don't need to tell them and then you just mm -hmm. walk out that way you don't get any you know you don't get any visual feeling of like them thanking you because I, it's like what you said like um going back to the initial point i think you were alluding to kindness is a selfish act isn't it it is just yeah let's explain that just a little bit before just as we wrap this up here well, I mean, one of the things that I talk about, and I, you know, I've given a few talks about this, and one of the things I talk about is that actually kindness helps you in four specific ways. 
Um, one is in happiness, which is it, it actually raises your happiness levels. And it does so actually over a course of three to five days, actually. It's not just like in that moment you're happier, but you become a happier person over three to five days. Number two that I bring up is it's healthier for you. Uh, it lowers your cortisol levels, which is a stress hormone. Uh, it actually improves your heart, uh, basically your uh, your your heart. It literally improves your heart by lowering your blood pressure. Uh, there's again science that shows this. Um, you know they, they've done tests at uh, senior homes and found that. Uh, seniors who volunteer actually have a lower mortality rate, something massive at like 40% lower mortality rate than, than seniors who don't. I, I could be very happy, very happy to send you the studies that, uh, that, that people have done about this. It, it goes on and on. Um, so one of the things that a lot of times I talk about is that, look, I mean, accept that kindness is a selfish act. A lot of us, we're very... We, we, we want to be humble, so we're not comfortable taking a compliment. Like, I, I have difficulty taking a compliment a lot of times somebody has to be like oh like you know that's a great thing you did and i'll be like no 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 I'll, you know i'll kind of push it off but then realize that giving them that opportunity to say thank you is even that act is an act of kindness in a lot of ways like giving someone an opportunity to sort of share what they've done or share what they've experienced because of you that's also part of it um so the the main point of it is that uh, it, once we're accepting that Doing an act of kindness is not making you holier than thou. It doesn't make you necessarily a superior person. It's just being a human being. Um, I think that makes things easier for other people to accept and also for you to just go out there and do more of this. All right. So there you go. No reason uh, to not be, be kind to people. In fact, if you're kind to people, you'll be happy for three to five <laughs> days. You'll lower your cortisol levels, improve your heart, lower your blood pressure. You'll be rocking it. Um, John Wang, who is the founder of the One Kindness Movement, thank you so much. I want you as the listener now to go and follow John's uh, Instagram page, which is One Kindness. Um, just go there because that'll be a great daily reminder if you're on Instagram, um, just to remind you to do your act of kindness that day. So follow him on Instagram. It's uh, at One Kindness. Uh, John's going to... Um, John's going to send me the little, little wristband, um, uh, but you should grab a wristband. How does the, the listener or the follower grab a, 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 one of these wristbands, which again is a visual and physical daily reminder to perform that one act of kindness? So starting in 2017, uh, early 2017, we'll have these available for uh, individuals to go and order on your own time. You just go to our website, which is one kindness. Dot org, which is O-N-E-K-I-N-D-N-E-S-S dot org, and you can get one of these wristbands. Um, it's just there as a daily reminder, but it also helps you create, we have a 21-day challenge. So the idea behind it is that you want to do this for at least 21 days, and you want to challenge a friend or a family member to join you on it, so you can kind of keep each other accountable in doing it. Uh, and I can guarantee you after 21 days, your life is going to change. Uh, it's, it's just, and it's, it's just to help yourself and help other people around you. There's no way, there's no reason not to do this. Well, John, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you sharing your kindness with me and with my, uh, with my audience. If you're listening to this, go ahead and follow John on his Instagram, which is at one kindness, grab yourself um, uh, a wristband at onekindness.org. I just went there as he was finishing speaking and put my email address in there to sign up because he, you get um, uh, little email notifications telling you, giving you examples of kind acts that you can uh, follow. And just to finish this, I'm actually going to send a text message to someone, uh, one of my friends right now. I've already typed it out. It says, I appreciate you. That is all. Bang. <laughs> just texted it. So, Fantastic, dude. <laughs> so maybe we'll see whether we get a response in the next 20 seconds that we wrap this up. But uh, uh, John, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Keep doing what you're doing and uh, keep spreading kindness in the world. And I, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me on the show, James. I appreciate you and for the opportunity. <laughs> All right. Thanks very much to the audience. We'll catch you on the next one. See ya.